Good evening, and welcome to worship this Monday, Thursday evening. My name is Pam Smith, and I'm the pastor here at Grace Evangelical Lutheran Church in Lakeland. And a particular welcome not only to those of you who are with us on site, but also to those of you who are joining us through the live stream, through Facebook and YouTube and our website. Um, so a couple of words about tonight. Um, tonight is the beginning of one service of three days. This is Monday, Thursday. The service will continue tomorrow with Good Friday services, and then will culminate on Sunday morning with the Festival of the Resurrection, one service. And so um, I would invite you then uh, to sit back, to um, reflect for a bit on what this Lent has been like for you. What have you learned about God in this Lenten time? What have you learned about yourself in this Lenten time? And then as, we, uh, as our service continues, how we bring all of that together as an offering um, as we enter into these three days. Let us then prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Would you please stand and turn to face the processional cross? Okay. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Um, you may be seated. <coughs> uh, 
On Ash Wednesday, we were invited into the season of Lent, in which we remember Jesus' Passover from death to life. We acknowledged our need for repentance and for God's mercy, recognizing that our sinful nature serves to separate us from God and from one another. As disciples and followers of Jesus, we were called to the disciplines of Lent, self-examination and repentance, prayer and fasting, generous giving and works of love. These disciplines grow out of our baptisms. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we continue to seek to amend our lives in conformity with God's love for us in Christ Jesus. God never tires of giving peace and new life to God's people. Tonight, we are particularly mindful of the ways in which this peace and renewal comes to us. In the words of absolution, we receive forgiveness. We firmly believe that by this absolution, our sins are indeed forgiven because it comes in the name and by the command of our Lord Jesus. In the washing of feet, we experience the loving service to which we are called as we follow the example of Jesus, who washed the feet of all of his disciples the night in which he was betrayed. And in Holy Communion, we are members of Christ's body, and we participate most intimately in his love. Remembering the Last Supper with his followers, we eat the bread and share the cup of this holy meal. Together, we receive the Lord's gift of himself, and we join into the new covenant, which makes us one with him. This is a foretaste of the great banquet we will share with all the faithful when our Lord returns, the culmination of our reconciliation with God and each other. These three, absolution, foot washing, and holy communion, these three are the focus of our worship this evening. Would you please stand? Let us pray. God of mercies and all consolation, come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may attend to your word, confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Let us make confession to God. Almighty God, merciful Lord, I, a troubled and penitent sinner, confess to you all my sins and iniquities with which I have offended you and for which I justly deserve your punishment. But I am sorry for them and sincerely repent of them and I pray for your boundless mercy. For the sake of the suffering and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Forgive my sins, grant me your Holy Spirit for the amendment of my sinful life, and bring me to life everlasting. Amen. My friends, Almighty God is merciful and has sent his only Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. Through the Holy Spirit, God cleanses us and gives us power to proclaim the mighty deeds of God who called us out of darkness into the splendor of his light. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, any who would like to receive individual absolution may come to the rail.
the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment, to love one another as he has loved us. By your Holy Spirit, write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others as Jesus was servant of all. Through our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. Our first reading this evening is from the book of Exodus, chapter 12. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided into proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembly, the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both humans and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be the day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord.
Our next reading is from the 1st Corinthians chapter 11. For I received from the Lord what I also handed unto you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when which he was betrayed took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Please rise as we welcome the gospel. Gospel according to St. John, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, then not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet and had put on his robe and returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. If I were to preach each of these texts, we would be having breakfast together tomorrow morning. 
rest assured, I'm not going to do that. And I looked at what these texts offer, and they offer important instruction. And of course, Jesus' last words to his disciples are particularly moving to us. But to take them from that room over 2,000 years ago and to bring them to tonight, I think, is really our task, not only the preacher's task. As Pat was reading uh, from the book of Exodus, let's put that into context again. We kind of read these stories in isolation sometimes. Of course, the Passover meal happened the night before God's people were being released from their enslavement in Egypt. And God wanted them to be nourished for the journey, and he gave them some very specific instructions, didn't he? I mean, down, down to what they were to wear and how they were to prepare and all of that. In my experience, when God does that, when he gives us instruction like that, it means pay attention something important is going to happen. And something important did happen that night. The angel of the Lord passed over the homes of all of God's people, and they were redeemed. Of course, it's so interesting to me that at this time, as we were hearing those stories of the Passover, that our Jewish friends, as we speak here, are indeed observing and celebrating Passover. And not only that, but those of the faith of Islam are also in the midst of Ramadan, one of their very high, holy, important times of discipleship and obedience and consecration and focus. So all these three major religions of the world, of the Western world, tonight share something in common, a time of devotion. But like me, I'm sure that you've heard the news of what is happening in Jerusalem. And it is a time of great conflict, great conflict over holy sites, holy sites that are claimed such by two of these major, well, really all three of these major religions. And so it's in that context of that, that conflict and violence that the words of Jesus come like a clarion call. I want to say that they're so tender and sweet. And sometimes Jesus' words are tender and sweet. But tonight, I believe that Jesus is speaking loudly and clearly about what it means to be a follower of Jesus. And that is to love one another. That word love is certainly interesting. I'd like you to think for a minute. I'd like you to think back to a time that you felt truly loved. Try to get a specific time in your being, in your mind. Now, I'd like you to think of a time that you have felt truly loving to another. I would bet a lot of money and I'm not a gambling person, that those times that came into your mind had action in them. We often think of love as a feeling. You know, we feel love toward another. Um, But if we really think about it, love manifests itself in action. And it's so interesting, Jesus didn't say, a new frame of reference for your life I would like to give to you. He didn't say, you know, here's a couple of steps you might follow. He said, a new commandment I give you that you love one another. I find that confounding. How on earth 
can God command me to have a feeling? And I would suggest to you tonight that he can't. What God is wanting for us is that we act in loving ways to one another because I bet your experience may have been the same as mine. Sometimes I find when I act in loving ways to someone, my heart softens towards them and I begin to love them and appreciate them more deeply. Often the feeling will follow the action. Now, I'm struck tonight by all of the of which there is no shortage in the world. I don't need to recount it. Frankly, it would weary me too much if I were to do that. We know it and we hear it. And so this commandment of Jesus that we love one another that's where the clarion call comes in. We, as followers of Jesus, are called to do things differently than the world does. To do things, even bold and strong and powerful and courageous things, to do them not because of power and right and entitlement, but to do them because of love. Sometimes love is shown in small ways, like foot washing, like holding the door, like holding someone as they weep. And sometimes love is shown in grand ways, in big ways, in overt ways. And I think of John Lewis who said, make good trouble. And that too is loving. The difficulty, of course, is discerning when, <laughs> when good trouble is called for and when it's not. When that happens, we do at least two things. One, we examine our heart. We examine our heart to see if love is the motive. We examine our heart and pray that our desire for power and control be pushed to the side so that love can fully grow in that. And the second thing that we do is we gather together because the ways that we love one another and our community are often determined best in discernment as a group. And that's something that I think in our society we don't do very well because we're so individualistic. I can do it myself. Well, you know what? I can't. I can't do it myself. So this command to love is at the heart of what it means to follow Jesus because he loved us first. So as they were gathered around that table and Jesus had taken off his outer garments and put on a, an apron of sorts, do you think he got to Judas and said, not for you? Right? He didn't. But he knew. He knew what Judas was going to do. And he washed Judas's feet. And not only that, he fed him at the table, right? He fed him at the table, even knowing, even knowing what an example that is for us to live into that direction, that command to love. So I can honestly tell you since we have confessed and been forgiven, that there are a number of people in my life that I have not loved the way that I ought to have loved them. There were a number of people about whom my heart hardened. But Jesus fed me. 
Jesus washed my feet anyway, and in so doing brought me closer to him and to each other. Because this is a dynamic, organic thing that we do, even ritually as we do it every year, every week, every season. With all of the discord in the world, the world needs to see that we as Christians love. I don't remember which book it is in, um, where the writer says, see these Christians? See how they love one another? That is a witness. A witness not to us, but a witness to the one who loved us first. A witness that we are called to bear. So I know many of you will know the answer to this question. The Greek word for witness. Anybody? Martyr. <laughs> what did you say? Opa. Opa. I don't know what that means. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Celebration. Woohoo! That's. <laughs> And so, in witnessing, we are martyrs. That means that we lay aside our own self and what we want, and instead we bear witness to the love of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> oh, Pat, I love you. <laughs> Would you please stand? seated. And at this point in our service, we will have that foot washing. Um, so a couple of things about that. First of all, I don't care if you didn't have a pedicure today. Okay. I don't care if you have bunions or calluses or blisters. It doesn't matter because in the foot washing, we come as we are because it is Jesus who receives us as we are. So I would suggest this. Um, um, take off one shoe and sock, and, and ladies, if you have those real thin, like um, knee highs or pantyhose, you need not mess with that because that dries so fast that there's no need for that. So I would invite you to come forward, sit in the pew, and when you're ready, come and sit in the chair, um, and I will wash your feet.
my friends, hear these words from Steve Garnus Holmes, a retired Methodist pastor. My beloved Jesus, my healer and savior, I do not look up to the heavens to seek you. I look down, down to the lowest place beneath me. For you have come with all the sorrows of the world, come fresh from death row, from the starving child, the bombed apartment, the locked ward, from the bleeding street and the dusty camp with the despair of those dying alone. You have come and knelt beneath me and washed my feet. With a world to save, you come to me. With such attentive tenderness, taking your time, holding my wayward feet in your hands, you bless me, heal me, wash me, anoint me. You take the lowest place and serve me. I will never find you up on the podium or pedestal, but down on the ground, harvesting, cleaning, invisible, among the unseen, unsung, unsavory. You, my lowest Christ, my ground beneath, my earth, you hold my feet. I need never look higher. Amen. Would you please stand for prayer? <clears throat> at this service of communion at Christ's table, let us join together in prayer for the church, the world, and all in need. Blessed are you, O God, for the church, our presiding bishop, Elizabeth, and our bishop, Pedro. Bring all people into your fellowship of love. Make us worthy to share your meal. Pass us over from death into life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed are you for this good earth. Protect waters from pollution. Bless the growing crops with your rain and sun. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed are you for our nation. Inspire us in all nations to live in peace and concord. Free those who are enslaved by injustice. We pray particularly for all who are fleeing oppression, persecution, and war, and for those who are victims of terrorism and violence. Help us to be peacemaker in our neighborhoods and communities that the world may grow in peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed are you for the abundance of your provisions. We pray for the hungry, those in need, the sick, those on our congregational prayer list, those known only to you, and those we name aloud on our lips or in the quietness of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our blessed are you for this community of faith. Form us into servants and give us your spirit of service. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our blessed are you for all believers who have gone before us. Bring us all at the end into your everlasting glory. Lord, in your mercy, Receive, O loving God, our prayers, and grant that we and all people may know the mercy of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We prepare now to receive our offerings. The plates will be passed, um, or you may um, place offerings as you leave the sanctuary.
Would you please stand? <clears throat> Let us pray. God of glory, receive these gifts and the offering of our lives. As Jesus was lifted up from the earth, draw us to your heart in the midst of the world, that all creation may be brought from bondage to freedom, from darkness to light, and from death to life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, amen. amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy God, you set aside the perfection of your Trinitarian life to create the universe, and you called the children of Abraham to be your priestly kingdom. You gave your people freedom in the parting of the sea and marked them for life with the blood of the Lamb. In Jesus, you laid aside the robe of your majesty and knelt among your children, facing humility and rejection. In his agony in the garden and suffering on the cross, you showed the world the extent of your love and your longing to bring us home to the throne, where we shall join angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, praising your holy name in the unending hymn. <laughs> Gracious God, in Jesus you became the Lamb who takes away the sins of the world, and the living bread broken for the life of your children, who at the Last Supper with his disciples took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Come among us in the power of your Holy Spirit that your people, as fragile and fitful as your disciples, may become your temple, and that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Great is the mystery of our faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Blessed and broken God, be among your people who taste the bitter herbs of slavery and oppression. Be close to your children who are poured out in grief and despair. Remake the church, your son's body, where it is broken by discord and dispute, and renew your creation in the joy of thanksgiving. Spread your table in the face of friends and enemies that all may know your peace and gather in the company of your saints where you, in the presence of Christ and the companionship of the Holy Spirit, are all in all, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We are bold to pray as our Savior taught us, saying, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, bread and forgive, forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. My friends, we commune at the altar rail. Um, as you see an open spot, please come and kneel and you will be fed. After you have received the host, that is the bread, the first chalice that will be offered to you is one for intinction, where you may dip. The second chalice is for drinking. And we have a chalice of juice along with gluten-free wafers available as well. Please come. All is now ready. <laughs>
now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ preserve us unto life everlasting. Amen. <laughs> Lord Jesus, in a wonderful sacrament, you strengthen us with the saving power of your suffering, death, and resurrection. May this sacrament of your body and blood so work in us that the fruits of your redemption will show forth in the way we live for you and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as the altar is stripped. 